I'm Larry Young, Program Manager with the GeoDatabase team, and I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the Trace Network, which is new with ArcGIS Pro 2.6. So why did we create another network? Well, the utility network has a lot of capabilities, a lot of uh, advanced modeling capabilities for utilities and telecom industry. Some of our other industries, some of our other users were looking for a path forward to uh, ArcGIS Pro. These users were using the geometric network. So we needed to create a simplified network experience for those non-utility users, such as hydro users like USGS, other government agencies, rail potentially, though rail is kind of interesting. It could go trace network or could go utility network as they have some advanced needs as well. But these other industries needed a, more, a simpler path forward to ArcGIS Pro. So we created the trace network to address those needs. So with ArcGIS Pro 2.6, the capabilities of the trace network are the ability to move directly from a geometric network, that one button migration uh, directly to the trace network. You can also start from scratch. You have full editing capabilities in the network, including rubber banding of connected edges. You can use all the editing tools, feature templates, and that sort of thing to create new tools and so on. You can set flow direction based on digitized direction of lines or against digitized direction of lines. And you can then trace your network using some of the common trace capabilities, such as a connected trace, upstream, downstream, or shorted shortest path trace using network weights as needed, network weights or attributes. You also have the ability to create network diagrams or schematics from selected features. This is a, a new capability. And with ArcGIS Pro 2.6, all the capabilities of the trace network are within file geodatabases. Now going forward, there are some additional capabilities we still want to add. One of those is multi-user editing. And that will be through feature services and branch versioning in the same way that the utility network is supported. That will also give you the ability to take trace network offline through collector and the other off-the-shelf applications and so on. So that's still to come uh, next year. In addition, we want to support things like connectivity and containment associations the ability to connect to point features without having to have an actual edge between them or the ability to contain one feature inside of another feature. So that would allow things like streams inside a conduit or potentially even marking what watershed polygon a particular stream is in. So then when you do a trace, you can return the polygon of the watershed. In addition, we want to create an SDK for the trace network for any customization that users might want to do. So that's a very quick overview of the trace network. Now what I want to do is to switch over to a demo to actually show you some of the capabilities. So let's take a look at the trace network. So we're here in ArcGIS Pro and we're looking at some NHD or National Hydraulic Data Set data for the state of North Carolina. We actually get some streams that go outside of North Carolina, but that's the general idea here. Uh, this data was converted directly from a geometric network. So with this data, you can see the different symbology. If we look in our table of contents, we can see the different uh, symbols here. If we do a quick review, we can look at some of the areas. For instance, this is Lake Norman. Uh, outside of Charlotte, the green line represent artificial paths through things like lakes. If we go out to uh, eastern North Carolina, we can see these purple lines represent canals and ditches. You can see the regular spacing, so I'm going to assume these are irrigation ditches for the farms out here in uh, eastern North Carolina. If we go out to the coast, we actually see some red, and these are errors. These represent self-intersecting lines. I can identify this error. It tells me it's a self-intersecting line. So with the trace network, things like this will be identified. 
you can decide whether or not you want to clean them up. A trace isn't going to get out here to these islands because there's nothing connecting them. So we don't have to worry too much about that. We go out to one of my favorite areas in North Carolina, a place called Mount Mitchell, which happens to be the highest peak in eastern United States. We can see mostly blue and that represents streams or rivers. So how do you get started with the trace network? Well, you start here in geoprocessing with the toolbar, or sorry, the toolbox for the trace network. So you can see the tools we have here, including convert geometric network to trace network. So this is that one click migration from the geometric network that some of you are looking for. You can also create a trace network from scratch. If you don't already have an existing network, this is where you enable disable topology, set flow direction, do tracing, and so on. Once you have a trace network, you can add it to your map. When you do that, you get this additional layer. You can symbolize your errors, like we saw a minute ago, those line errors. We can look at system junctions. So these are places where two lines come together and there isn't an, a junction. So the system will put a junction there for connectivity purposes. We would also see any dirty areas that we might have. So when you edit the trace network, it's similar to editing a geodatabase topology, utility network, or network data set. You get dirty areas and at some point in your workflow, you validate your edits. So this is the trace network layer. When you have trace network data within your map, you get the trace network toolbar. And that's what we see across ArcGIS Pro here. And on this toolbar, I have things like validate, again, for cleaning my dirty areas or validating my dirty areas after an edit. Can set trace locations. Here are my different out of the box traces. I can create network diagrams. I'll show a little bit of that later. That's a new capability with trace network. And I can display my flow direction arrows. So let's get started and let's do a little editing here. And I'm gonna start by zooming into an area here around Mount Mitchell. And I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to select this stream here. And we're going to go to our Modify Features dialog, and I'm going to click on the Move tool. And what I want to do is just to show what you get from a rubber banding standpoint. So as I hover over this line, you can see when I move it, I get rubber banding. So all that connectivity that you would expect, all the movement of connected things you get with the trace network. With movement, and same with editing vertices, you get this little toolbar at the bottom, and it has options such as disconnect. So for whatever reason, if I wanted to disconnect an edge from my network, I can just toggle this button here to disconnect it, and I get a little preview on what's going to happen. I also have my stretch option here, so whether I want to rubber band back to the whole line segment, or in this case, just the first vertex, that's what I can toggle with this option. Now, I don't want to actually edit, so I'm just going to hit the cancel button in this case, and I'm going to clear our selection. So now let's look at doing a trace here. I'm going to zoom back out to our Mount Mitchell area, and here's Mount Mitchell. Again, this is the highest peak in eastern North Carolina, East, sorry, Eastern United States. So I'm going to set a couple of trace flags. So this kind of drops something down and where is it going to flow here? So we're going to drop a trace flag there and I'm going to drop another trace flag here below the Blue Ridge Parkway, which runs right along the ridge here. And we are going to do a downstream trace from those two locations. So when I do a trace, I get this uh, geoprocessing tool. I can set a bunch of options if I want to. I can specify where I want the output to go and so on. In this case, I'll just run as is. Go ahead and run this trace. And it's going to return for me about 2,600 streams. And we can zoom out to our selected set. And we can see here... Because we're on that continental divide or right near it from the spot near the peak of Mount Mitchell, we go out the French Broad, connect with the Tennessee River, and presumably go out to the Mississippi. 
For the spot below the Blue Ridge Parkway, though, we go out into the Catawba River watershed, out into South Carolina, and out to the Atlantic. So two locations very close together, but the flow is very different from those two spots. Now let's zoom down here into the bottom of the, or near the bottom of the Catawba watershed here. We're down in South Carolina at this point. Let's clear our selection. Let's also clear our trace flags and let's put a new trace flag here at the bottom. Uh, here in the, the bottom of the Catawba River and let's trace upstream. So what is the watershed here for the Catawba River? What are all the streams that are flowing into this spot here? Uh, so we'll run this trace and it returns for me about a little over 80,000 streams and river lines here. So we can go out to our extent and we can see the whole watershed for the Catawba River. So it's a pretty quick trace there. You might notice up here by Mount Mitchell, there's a little area where uh, I would have thought if we zoom in that that would be part of the watershed. Also, it's below uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, doesn't seem to be connected. So we can zoom in at the area where we think there ought to be a connection. And from our trace network toolbar, we can display flow arrows. And we can see the flow arrows. And this is just another layer here in my table of contents. So if I don't like symbology, I have the option of changing it. Um, but I can see these arrows. This particular stream line here within my network appears to be flowing the wrong direction. So what I can do is select just that segment. And from our geoprocessing tools, we can go to set flow direction. I can pick my network. I can pick the layer that I want to flip, which is the flow lines. And I want to set this to set flow direction against digitized direction. A better solution here might be actually edit the line and flip its orientation because all the other lines or streams within my network have flow direction set on digitized direction. But for this one, we're gonna set it against digitized direction. I'm gonna run that. We're going to update our flow arrows and we can see they're now flowing the right way. So if we run our upstream trace again, we can see that hopefully our results will now include that one stream and everything above it. So we'll get a few more uh, streams returned. So now we can see everything's included by just flipping flow direction. So that's how easy it is to set flow direction within the trace network. Now, one more thing we want to do here. We want to clear our trace flags and let's set a new one on that stream that we just flipped. And let's go upstream again. And we'll just run our trace just to return everything that's upstream from there. And let's create a new network diagram or schematic from those selected features. You can see that returned here in our table of contents. It's mostly streams above that. So we can change the color here so it shows up a little better. Apply that. We can see those things. We can turn off our system junctions. We can also do things like change the layout. So if you want this to be a, a main line or more of a schematic representation, we can update that. And now we can see what that looks like. We might turn on labeling to pick up stream names or the ones that we have for these stream segments. As we zoom in, you can see the ones that actually do have the name attached to the streams. We can see Armstrong Creek was our main segment running through there and then the different streams connecting onto it. So that's just a little overview of the trace network.